Okay, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to get started as it's five o'clock. So, welcome everyone to the Money Management Webinar. I'm your host, uh, my name is Shamima, and I'm a Student Recruitment Officer of the University of Greenwich. And you're also joined by my colleague, um, Yvette, who's um, going to be managing the QA. So, if you have any questions during the presentation or even afterwards, feel free to put them in the QA box or the chat box. So I'm just going to start off with some housekeeping rules. Um, so as you've joined this meeting with uh, um, with Zoom, if you wish to say anonymous, you can do so by um, changing your identity, so changing your name. Uh, please just make sure that you join without video and that um, you turn off your on audio as well, just to make sure that you can have a better experience in listening um, this webinar. And like I've mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A function where my colleague Yvette will answer your questions. And if you do um, want to come on camera and ask us questions at the end, um, please make sure that you change your background so your identity will still remain anonymous. Um, just to keep going, a uh, couple of things just to mention. Please do not share your telephone or phone number in the chat bar, sorry, in the chat function, or um, share your email address, any photos, any home addresses, or use um, inappropriate languages. And make sure that you do not re reveal any um, identity of um, other um, attendees um, if they want to remain anonymous. Okay, so let's get started. So what is the whole point of this webinar? So this webinar will be um, will be giving you some advice on how you can manage that money uh, that you receive as a, a maintenance loan or tuition loan when you go to postgraduate. And um, this is um, an estimate, uh, this, this is to estimate your income needed to survive at universities because there are various uh, expenses that you need to consider when you come and study um, at any university, not just ours and is also to identify your personal attitude towards money management and spending so are you a type of person that as soon as you receives that money spends it all splashes and to go for shopping or are you a more careful person where it saves up knows what they need to spend on and um, how to make sure to manage their needs and their wants as well um, and also for us to give you any tips or budgeting tools to make sure that if you do want to track your money and your spending um, you know how to do so and also learn how to um, make some extra money while studying as well so i'm going to start off with some key facts <clears throat> that you might have uh, known already or you might haven't so 70 percent of students wish they had better financial education uh, before going to university definitely that that is um myself as well um, sometimes our schools don't teach us um, completely how we should be managing our money um, but obviously that is a learning curve for us when we come to university and hopefully this webinar will give you a good understanding and you're not within that 70 percent then we have 75 percent of students uh, that end up working a part-time or temporary um, job to supplement their student loan okay because that money that you receive trust me, will not cover your costs. Because you will see that, especially if you're living out of um, a home, that you need to pay your rent, your groceries, your travel, and um, even for sometimes for equipment uh, that is required within your course. And the average student loan debt back in 2021 was 45K. And bearing in mind, this is nationally and not specifically for London. For London um, is, I think, about around 50K. And 75% of students are unlikely to pay off their student loan within the 30 years of agreement. OK, so that's why we want to make sure that you understand um, the value of money and, the, and we want to change your attitude. So I have uh, a couple of scenarios we, and I want you to put in the q and um, sorry, in the chat box. Um, what is your attitude towards money? So the first scenario is you get 50% um, for your birthday. And what would you do with that 50 pound? Sorry, not 50%, 50 pound. What would you do with that 50 pound? Would you A, hit the shops and spend it all? B, buy a treat and save the rest? Or C, put it all in the bank for a rainy day? I'm just quickly going to open the chat and see what people's opinions are towards that first question okay 
All right, okay, so we've got a mix of answers. So we've got a couple of people that are saying B and C, which is good. So you have a list, a good understanding of the money and how should we spend. Okay, interesting, okay. So most of you have said B or C. Okay, let's see the next question. So the next scenario is, do you know how much you spend in a week? A, no, I haven't got a clue. B, sometimes I know, but don't often keep track. And C is yes, I'm very organized and know exactly what and when I spend my money on. So again, let's see what people are saying. <clears throat> okay, interesting. Again, very similar to the first question, which is um, B and C. All right, oh, I just made my chat a bit too big. Okay, and then last scenario is, what best describes you as a spender? A, I think I should be more careful. B, I'm always in control. And C, I'd rather not spend much at all. Okay, a couple of you are saying C. Anyone else wants to put an answer forward? Okay. So again, we're getting the similar type of answers from the previous scenarios, which is B and C. All right then. So based on what your answers um, you have given, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit of what that means. So if uh, most if most of your answers were B, then you're a savvy spender. So you like to spend your money, but you know your limits, which is a very good thing when it comes to university. Make sure that you don't overspend though, okay? Um, I know sometimes you might have those odd impulses and want to go and buy a new laptop when you might not need one or a, a MacBook straight away where you could have another brander that does the same exact job okay but you know how to keep uh, on continuing to keep a good balance as well and then if most of you have put C then you are definitely a super saver you really know and enjoy saving your money it gives a sense of power control and security who doesn't want that and then um but are you you paying your way when hanging out with friends though so make sure that you don't rely on the uh, spendaholics friend who pay for your um for your drinks when you go out or for your food when you go again when you go out you want to make sure that some some time to time you want to treat your friends as well i'm not saying every day but here and there you want to make sure that you go and treat your friends as too all right great that's fantastic. So let's move on to the next part. So this, again, I'm going to go for some couple of scenarios and I want to see what you guys think about those scenarios. So this is the student finance calculator. If you've got, uh, if you can do this, if you can go to Google and just type student finance calculator, it will take you to the um, government website where you will be able to see that if your household income is this amount, how much maintenance loan you might receive. OK, so this is a good way to estimate, OK, I might get this amount of money. This is um, how much is to spend it on certain items. And this is how much I should save. OK, so we're going to go through some scenarios to see uh, based on these people's circumstances, how much maintenance loan they could receive. So let's start off with Oliver. So he lives in London and is studying in London as well. And his household income is 25000 So based on that, how much maintenance loan do you think he will receive? So do you think it's A, which is 7450 B, which is 3516 C, which is eleven thousand uh, and one pound, or uh, D, which is nine thousand uh, four hundred eighty-eight, and lastly E, which is seven thousand nine hundred eighty-seven. So he lives in London and studies in London as well, and his household income is within the threshold, which is twenty-five thousand. Any guesses for anyone?
Okay, so let's have a look. So he will receive, if this works perfectly, he will receive £7,987 for his maintenance loan, okay? So this is not exactly the lowest amount and it's not the highest amount. It's an average of how much he could get based on where he's studying and where he's also staying and his household income as well. So next person, so we've got uh, Minta's home is in Leeds, okay, but she is studying and living in London, so she's not staying at home, she's um, she's she's an accommodation place which is based in London, at uh, London University, however, her household income is a little bit more compared to Oliver, which is 35,000, so based on that scenario, how much do you think Minta will receive? Anyone, any guesses? Okay, someone said D, so the 9,488. Anyone wants to contradict me that or agree? Okay, yes, okay, so most people are saying D, so let's see. So Minta will receive actually the highest amount or one of the highest amount which is the eleven thousand and one pound so the reason why is because she is going from a place um, so she's going from somewhere from outside of london to live in london and study in london as you guys all know london is very expensive even though her household income is a little bit more compared to oliver she still will uh, receive a higher amount uh, compared to him because she's living outside so she has to think about accommodation rent uh, groceries and all of that um all of that so that is why the student finance takes all of that into consideration and um decided to give her that amount so next uh person so we got Khalifa's um home is in London She's studying and living in Bristol, though, and her house household income is 18000 OK, so now this is kind of the reverse for Minters. So she her home is in London, but she is outside of London to study and staying. And her household income is um, 18000 So based on that, what amount do you think she will receive? Anyone, any guesses? We've got three answers left. Okay, someone said the 11K. The 11K has already gone to Minta. So the, what other amounts do you think she could receive? So we've got still A, which is 7,450, B, which is 3,516, or D, which is 9,488. Okay, so a lot of people are going with D. Okay, let's see what's hers. So she, right, so you guys are correct. She will receive the nine thousand four hundred eighty-eight because the government is taking into account the fact that she is she does live in London, and her household income is eighteen thousand. She won't receive the um, higher amount, which is the eleven thousand, because of the fact that she's going to live in Bristol, so it's not as expensive as London. Okay, perfect. So the next scenario. We have uh, Diane who lives in Kent and studying in, oh, that got covered because of the, okay, I think she is studying in London and her household income is at 40,000. I'm just going to double check again. Oh, I can't see that. Okay, yes, so she lives in Kent, she's studying in London, and her household income is 40,000. So out of the remaining two, which one do you think she will receive? Okay, a lot of you are saying A. Okay, some people are saying B as well. All right, let's have a look. 
so she will actually receive the um, A amount. So she uh, is, um, because she lives in Kent, and again, she's living in London, and London is very expensive, and even though her household income is above the threshold, she will receive uh, the 7,450, okay? So there are a lot of contributing factors that go into making a decision of how much maintenance you will receive. So uh, feel free to always go and check on the student finance calculator if you're unsure of how much you can receive and then put an application through. Okay, last one, apologies that I got covered again. So Pam's home is in London. She is studying uh, in London as well, but she's taking the minimum no means tested loan. So how much, which is the last answer, would be the no mean uh, tested loan? is the 3,500, I'm sorry, 3,516, okay? So this is the minimum that you could get. So as you can see, um, regardless of your income, you can still get household income, you can still um, take out a maintenance loan, okay? So we've seen different scenarios of uh, the um, of these different people, the household income and then the matter they could get, but again, the best thing would be to go and check out the student finance calculator where you can put your own household income, where you will be studying, and if you're staying um, in or out of, outside of London, and potentially see how much amount um, you could get. Okay, so the next part is why budgeting matters. Okay, so budgeting matters because it helps you plan how you manage your money while studying at universities. As I mentioned before, uh, there are going to be situations where you will you could run out of that money that you've been given by this um, the government and you will need to be able to pay rent pay for grocery travel um equipments that you might need for your course okay so that's what budgeting is very very crucial it also helps you control your spending okay so it gives you a understanding also for the future when you're not studying um, uh, um anymore but you are working and uh, you know exactly how much you need to spend and how much you want to spend on something if you want to go shopping and also to maintain and uh, to also have some savings for for example if you want to go and buy a house later on um, but it also helps you track your income and expenses and it helps you prepare for emergencies because you never know an emergency could happen for example you could have spent all your um your maintenance loan and let's just say that you you drop your phone are you able to have you got enough money in your bank to be able to repair your phone at the moment or your laptop imagine you've got uh, imagine if you've got an assignment coming up and your laptop just broke what are you going to do have you got money to go and repair that okay and you will also be able to save money okay so it's not just about um expenses but it's also about saving money for um something that you want to buy later or you want to want to consider putting for example a deposit for a house okay so i'm going to talk about some budgeting techniques oh i've gone a bit too far okay so budget techniques that um we have so we've got for example the traditional budgeting um technique where um so this is technique is what um where you list your income you list your expenses and find the difference then you set goals for how much you want to spend in each category such as rent grocery and um transport or travel then we've got the AP20 and this technique you spend 80 percent of your income and save the 20% or the technique that is the kind of optimal technique we would say and depends on each person to be honest is the 50 30 20 rule so this is a simplified technique where you break down your expenses into three categories your needs your wants and your saving so 50% of your income should go towards your needs 30% should go towards your wants. So what do you want to, if you want, for example, your phone, if you want your laptop, and 20% should go into savings, okay? So this is kind of like the uh, budgeting technique that we would recommend, okay? So you've got the, uh, so again, yeah, 50% they're going to your needs. So that's rent, groceries, travel, um, equipment. And then 30% which is your want and 20% is your savings. Okay. Now, 
Okay, so as you can see, we've divided what are your needs, which is red food and books, utilities, your wants, latest shoes, a new phone, a new laptop, savings, that could be savings towards a deposit, it could be also saving towards a new phone or a new laptop, or saving for an emergency fund, for example, if your laptop breaks or your phone breaks or something else. Okay. Now I'm going to um, go back to kind of like the case studies that we've mentioned before and we're going to look at these people's expenses and with your help I want you to tell me if they are budgeting well or not really. So we looked at before Khalifa's monthly expenses, so her uh, spending, so she receives a maintenance loan, if I'm not wrong, she received the £9,488 uh, per year, okay, bearing in mind that this amount doesn't come in one go, it will come in three installments, so the first installment in September, the next in January, and the last in April. So that is only for a year, though, and the next year you reapply again and that amount could change again based on your circumstances and your household income. So she has all of these costs. So she's got rent. OK, so she's studying in London. OK, no, sorry. Her home is in London, but she's studying in Bristol and staying in Bristol. So she pays rent. OK, then she's got a gym membership, entertainment transport, groceries, um, her mobile phone, shopping and socialising, all right? So with the 9,488, that comes to £790.66 uh, per month, okay? So based on, in, on her cost, we can see that her total is above her income, okay? So technically, she's she would be in a three thousand sorry not three thousand three hundred uh fifty four pound and ninety four pence in debt okay because her um cost is way more than her income so she will need to get a part time job to supplement for um for the cost that she has okay so definitely rent is a need you need to pay your rent membership. I would say is more of a want because you could go, for example, um, join some couple of classes that the university offers. Some of them are free as well. OK, you don't have to go and get the gym membership from Pure Gym or Active Gym or whether other like Virgin Gyms. OK, you don't need that. You could go also outside, go for a run or do some activities outside. Trust me, there is a lot of free options out there. Now, entertainment. Again, that's the want, okay? You don't need to have a Netflix subscription, a Hulu subscription, a Amazon Prime. You don't need that. There are other ways to watch TV. Free, good, old, free view TV is a way for entertainment as well. Transport, that is definitely a need. Grocery, that is a need as well. Mobile, that's a need. And then we've got shopping, that's a want, okay? So bearing in mind... When do you want to go and buy the new laptop or do new phone or new shoes? OK, and again, socializing is also a want. You don't have to go out every single day to go and see your friends. You want to go once or twice a week, not every day. OK, now let's look at the next um, scenario. So we've got Oliver, who's um, who lives in London, so whose home is in London and is also living and studying in London. And his household income is 25,000. And from our previous um, scenarios, we've seen that he receives a maintenance loan of 7,987 pound, which monthly comes up to uh, 665 pound 58. Okay, so that's his monthly income. Let's have a look at his cost. So his cost is, he doesn't have rent, the reason why, because he's staying at home, so that is something to bear in your mind, it is very reasonable to stay at home, definitely I stayed at home, and it has saved me so much money, and again, I could have used that money that I could have put in rent, I've used it to then maybe put, for example, I could actually afford to go and get a gym membership, or I could afford to get a Netflix account, or a um, Amazon Prime account, okay, or I could have put more money towards transport or um, get, I don't know, the latest phone or something else, okay? So we can see that his uh, gym member uh, gym membership is the same, entertainment, transport, and all of these, as you can see, are wants and needs as well. 
and his total um, cost is coming up as £648.97. So at the moment, he's saving about £16.61. So as you can see, he has he is making a saving after all those costs. But of course, it helps when you have a little bit more. Who doesn't want to save a little bit more? Now, when you're comparing both of the cases, we can see the Khalifa needs to get a, um, an, a part time job to make sure that those expenses are being um, covered. And Oliver um, is not needing so much of a part time job. However, if Khalifa put towards, she used the 50, 30, and 20 method. So she would have realized that at 50%, she, um, she needed 458.38, at 30% is 275, and then at 20% is 183. Okay, so make sure that when you do receive that maintenance loan, you understand what your expenses are going to be, what your wants, what your needs, and what your savings are going to be. Okay. Okay. So from the student money survey uh, back in 2020, you can see that these are kind of average amounts. Again, these are nationally. These, this is not based on what it's in London. Now expenses have gone up in London. So rent is usually £418. Then you could have grocery, which is £100 per month. And then you could have, for example, going out to 46 43 pound so there are various budgeting tools that you could have a look and see how much you're putting towards all of your expenses um and yeah so some budgeting tools that we uh, that you could have access to uh, is a great way to go on google and find a budgeting template okay these are free for anyone to use it's not specifically for university students but it's also for anyone for example for myself as well so you could go um, and find the spreadsheets put in all your costs so your wants your needs and your savings and it gives you how much you're spending if you're going over or if you're going under you've got more to spend um so more to save or not so you have all those links and we will have also at the end of the uh, presentation all the links on the um, on the things that we've mentioned that you can go and out and look for and something to bear in mind, when you come to universities, the first thing that you would want to do is open a student bank account, okay? But there are a couple of things that you need to consider very carefully when opening a student bank account. The first thing is an overdraft, okay? It's you as soon as um, you come to university you get all of these universities sorry all these banks are telling you come and join us we've got this we've got that the overdraft is two thousand we've got some of this is a thousand or some of this is a five hundred okay so if you hit the overdraft please make sure that you know how much interest you need to pay or how quickly you need to pay that money back okay um, some things that um, different uh, banks do is also some extras. So um, they give you different perks. For example, a 16 to 25 rail card, which is a great way to save on travel. Because if you join that with your Oyster card, if you come to study in London, you can get a third of your off-peak travel and a third of your monthly travel. Okay, so that is a great way. So that's definitely something that I used personally. So I used to travel off peak from zone to two to three. I think it used to be uh, usually it's a pound 50, now it's a pound 55. And um, I used to pay just a pound literally for my travel. So that was very helpful and it reduced a lot of my costing. Um, some others do, for example, you could get free Amazon Prime, a taste card. There's so many incentives that different banks give. So have a look at the type of incentives and make sure that also you are uh, you've got a good like a bank close by to where you're stay staying or studying, because if there is an emergency, you can go to the bank and uh, get that emergency sorted out. OK, so. Here are some top picks of the different uh, banks that um, kind of give different incentives and the different perks that they give out. And we've got, for example, HSBC, which has a 0% overdraft. First year you get 1,000, second year you get 2,000, and third year you get up to 3,000. That's very good just to think about. And the perks you get is a free 80, um, 80 pound um, and plus a choice of your 20 pound Uber Eats voucher. So there are various um, incentives that you can see the banks are offering. Please bear in mind that these are can change when you go and start university in September. So when you start in September, 
um, you will get those um, information and you can see all the uh, banks close by to you and you can choose based on the perks or the overdraft or the terms and conditions of the offer. Now, how do you, oh, sorry, my button doesn't work all the time. Let's go back. Okay, so how to avoid bad debt, okay? So don't borrow what you can't pay back, okay? So that is literally the first rule. So if you can't pay it back, don't borrow, okay? Avoid taking an overdraft with a high interest charge, okay? Again, that goes back to the first question. If I can't pay that interest charge back, then don't, don't take the overdraft. Um, avoid borrowing to, uh, to find staples purchases and pay off your overdraft balance in monthly in full, okay? So if you've taken an overdraft, it could happen because of an emergency. Just make sure that you're able to pay it off in full. Um, don't use credit cards. Um, if you do have, if you're not very good at managing your balances, however, if you do use it and you know um, how to use it, please make sure that you use it um, wisely. Avoid, avoid, uh, sorry, avoid payday loans and focus more on your needs and not what you want. Now, something to keep bearing in mind, because when you come as a student, um, when you come to the university, <clears throat> to any university we realize that living away from home is a big change and we tend to go towards uh, going and getting takeaway okay we tend to go out very often we tend to go get uber it's now just because of all these different de uh, delivery companies it's so much more easier to get food very quickly but as you know delivery costs even if it's a one or two pound delivery on top of that, you get in um you get in a meal that you could easily make at home for so much more cheaper, and you're saving money on top of that, and it will taste so much more better as well. So, for example, if you go to Nando's, you get a um, half a chicken, fries, corn, and a drink that could cost about twenty five pound. On top of that, that takes about thirty to forty minutes. Whereas if you buy a whole chicken. Again, with fries, corn, and drink, that will only cost you seven pound. Okay, you don't have to use the whole chicken; you can use the legs, the wings, and then you can save the rest for another time. And then it will only cost you seven pound, which is so much more cheaper compared to twenty-five, and it takes only about twenty to thirty minutes. Okay, go on YouTube, Google how to make a Nando's uh, peri peri chicken or something like that. Trust me, there are so many different um, options that you can make at home. Very quick, very cheap, and so much more tastier. Um, another example is going to Subway. It's easier to go and get in a Subway meal during lunchtime. A uh, 60 inch with crisp and drink and cookie. That cost, could cost up to £12 and takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So you could go do the same. And I actually did that over the weekend as well. I literally went to as a Tesco, got a submarine roll, um, some fillings, crisp and drink and, and cookie. It tasted so much more better than uh, the actual supper because it was fresh. The ingredients I just bought it there and came home and, and just made it. And um, it cost me like it didn't cost me that much. So here it cost eight pound, and it was very quick to make as well. Now the next thing is five guys. So a cheeseburger, fries, and a shake could cost up to twenty five pound, and it takes about thirty to forty minutes. Whereas you can go and get that fresh meat, cut. Um, you can get oven chips, and then you can make a shake at home, which will cost you only ten pound and very quick to make. So you can see. Home delivery, yes, it's very tempting because it's very quick. You don't have to even get out, uh, get out of your seat, only just to open the door. But making the home cooked meal, you, it is so much more easier. And also, you can meal prep for the whole week or even for a couple of days. So you don't have to um, constantly make everything fresh. Literally, um, prepare some stuff, put it in the fridge, and come back and just uh, preheat it, and then you're done. Okay. So it is so much more cost effective. You're saving so much money. And you're having tasty food rather than home delivery all the time. All that junk going to your body is not nice. Um, some example that we want to give you. We have the original flower who, um, this is a recipe that they made for six portions. Only cost £6. is easy to make. It's healthy, nutritious 
and you can share it with the people if you're living in accommodation even with your family okay so it's uh, uh, literally an easy recipe there is so much out there that you can go just google it on youtube this is what i do literally every time i go and make a dessert google it how to make that dessert or google how to make that um new lasagna recipe or new risotto whatever it is is out there you literally just go and have to get the ingredients and um and youtube it and look at that video and just make it yeah, so, so that's the food session. Now we come to the job. Oh, I keep sorry, um, I really apologize for that. Okay, so to the job sessions. So when it comes to university, like we've mentioned before, maintenance alone is not going to be enough. You will have to get a part-time job. And there are various um, various ways that you can get a part-time job. For example, you can join the student ambassador scheme. So this is something that we offer at the University of Greenwich. And you could also work in hospitality, holiday tempting, tutoring, uh, retail, or even other university jobs. So there is a lot of out there for students. It's a great way to make money and also to get some experience while studying. Now, next things, there are also 20 um, ways so these are just uh, a couple of ways that you could make money and it's very easy so one of them for example is literally completing a survey you could become a tutor you could do that like, now because of covid uh, or covid is just about to go but and uh, we're still in that stage where a lot of tutoring happens online so even at the comfort of your home or your little room and accommodation you could be a tutor tutoring some um some kids and get that money you could also become an extra in a film so if you want to i don't know be in the next fast and furious film or something else you could be an extra and make some money and um, there are various clinical trials you can join uh, you can do mystery shopping competition babysitting trust me there is a lot of out there okay so if maintenance and is not enough for you you're gonna want to go and make money go and find it out because there is stuff out there but also other ways to get some money is through um, scholarships and bursaries so, for example, the University of Greenwich offers uh, the Great Skills Scholarship and the Ampec Sports Scholarship. So those are, for example, the Great Skills Scholarship is specifically a £2,000 scholarship. Like it's paid in three instalments. Um, however, there are conditions that you have to meet in order to receive it. And same goes with the Ampec. And some bursaries that the university offer is, for example, the Commuters Bursary. So if you are living at home but you are studying a little bit further than where you are located, you could get up to £1,000 per academic year. And again, there are different conditions that you have to meet in order to get the bursary. Or if we've got the 700 best, sorry, the Greenwich bursary, which is a £700 bursary paid into an Aspire card, where you get in your first year academic year and uh it's based and it's given to students who have a household income of less than 25,000. so as you can see there are various scholarships that you can go out and find out some of them that we have listed are from the university of greenwich but they're also outside of the universities so for example you could go to the scholarship hub where it um, shows you all the scholarships that are out there um the different companies are sponsoring and uh, yes so you just have to see the conditions that you need to meet the legibility criteria and if you meet that just go and apply so that is another great way to get money and now just a little summary of what um, we've just talked about so estimate how much maintenance loan you will receive make sure that you go to the student finance calculator where you will be able to see uh, the, you can put your household income, you can put uh, where you're studying, where you're currently staying, and then they will give it a rough estimate. Then you can also estimate how much you need to earn on top of this, okay? Because like we've seen with Khalifa and Oliver's, th the maintenance loan might not always be enough based on your costs, so your needs and your wants. Uh, practice budgeting and money save, try and save money basically that's what we want to uh, tell you and that is kind of like the tip that you want to um, take uh, the most out of this presentation so make sure that you know how to budget know this before you start universities don't want to be in a financial situation where you're in debt and then you're like okay maybe I have a problem and I need to go and save up money 
Um, know what work you can do to help make and meet and where to find them. So, for example, the student ambassador scheme, you could become an extra in a movie, you could do service, tutoring. There is a lot of options out there. And investigate if there are any bursaries or scholarships that are available based on your um, eligibility. So if you're eligible for them, why not apply? That, really, that is an easy way to also to go and get that money. So like I mentioned before, um, we have uh, some links, useful links that you guys um, could. Uh, I'll just leave it there so you can take a screenshot and uh, go and read it off later. So feel free to take a screenshot for that. And now I'm just going to open it to you guys and see if you guys have any questions. Feel free to unmute yourself and or put your hand up if you have any questions. That's pretty much it in terms of the presentation. Can't see any questions at the moment. I hope everything was clear. If there is something that uh, wasn't clear or you think I missed and I should mention again, feel free to let me know and I'm more than happy to do so. Perfect. I'm glad that it was very informative. Okay, just want to quickly open the Q&A box if anyone has any questions. I can't see anything. All right then, so if no one has any questions, so I'm just going to say thank you so much for everyone for joining us tonight. And if you do have any further questions or anything that comes up to you um, in your mind later on, feel free to get in touch with us um, either by calling us at 0208 331 9000 or you can also get in touch with us by email or you can go to our website and you'll see a little um, pop-up with a live chat icon where you can speak to our team and they will give you any other information that you might want um, so yeah and also feel free to follow us on our social media accounts you can see what the University of Greenwich is up to and see if you like that content and uh, yeah so that's it from me thank you very much again for everyone coming tonight and I hope you have a lovely evening